We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show and we are in Santa Fe, New Mexico and today is... Nah. What you eating there, beautiful princess? Mm -hmm. Ah! Angela is eating Freddy's Blend probiotics. And um, we are in, not Santa Fe, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm. Sorry about that. And today is Friday, September 18th. 18th. And what else are you doing? It looks like you're doing some sprouting there. Mm-hmm. Um, we have three kinds of sprouts. I'm about to start off. We have the golden salad mix, red clover, and broccoli. And here's some I prepared earlier. Ooh, let me see that. What have we got in there? Mm, I think we've got a mixture of alfalfa, broccoli, and clover between these two bags. And these have been growing for about three days. And you're and already then, starting new ones. Mm-hmm. And then in the fridge, we've got probably the same kind of mixture over there. We are traveling on the road and making sprouts every single day. If we can do it, then you could do it. Come on, people. Angela lost 160 pounds. If she can do it, then... <laughs> Anyone can do it. Get sprouting. So, so you like those probiotics? Those Freddy's Blend probiotics I that we eat? I love the probiotics. What's so good about it? They taste so good. I just, I would live on the probiotics if I could. They're really yummy. And those are Freddy's Blend probiotics that we've got on our site. And um, what do you feel like you're, do you, are you getting any benefits from them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like they really help my intestinal flora. And I also have a, a background of um, chronic candida overgrowth. So I like to take the probiotics every day to help keep my candida in check. Nice. What are you doing now? Um, soaking the seeds overnight. So I'm giving them all some water to plump them up, take away those enzyme inhibitors. You just soak them overnight and then you put them in a nut milk bag and rinse them twice a day? Yep. And then they just start growing? Yes. It's that easy. It's that easy. And somebody asked me at the talk we did last night, why use um, a sprouting bag like this rather than a jar, like what's the difference? We use these things because we live on the road and if we had loads of glass, we'd probably break it all and it would all be a mess. So I just find it easier to use these. And then somebody told me today, the main benefit of using these is the airflow. Like many people's sprouts go moldy. Somebody was just writing to me today that she, no matter what she does, her sprouts always go moldy. So apparently this is one of the the key reasons for using sprouting bags is because you've got so much airflow, um, so it helps the sprouts not go moldy. So I thought that was really cool. I didn't know that. That's cool. Here's a little fun, funny story from yesterday's event last night. Um, Angela goes up there and she speaks and she brings a few products up that she talks about, and she always brings like just a random bag of sprouts, <laughs> and she brought up the daikon radish. And so she's like, okay, everybody, it's really good to sprout. And she pulls it up. I got a daikon radish one right here. And, you know, that's pretty hardcore, that stuff. And if you eat that, you're going to be, like, burning your mouth, especially if that's the only one you get. <laughs> so then everyone afterwards at the event just started buying daikon radish. Where's the da We sold out of them. Where's the daikon radish? Where's the daikon radish? They're, they're like, beginner sprouters. And they're going to be, like, loading up on daikon radish. They'd be, like, burning their mouths, babe. I know. That was rather unfortunate. There's going to be a daikon radish outrage very soon happening near you in Albuquerque if you're in this area. Maybe next time you could bring up garden salad mix or alfalfa. Yes. Start with the mild ones. Yes. There we go. Yeah. They're ready. And last but not least, we're here in this kitchen that we've been staying in for two days. It's kind of nice not traveling every single day. We've got a huge bag 
of ink and berries. Ink and berries. This is Angela's been having a ball with these. I think one of the real reasons why she likes them so much is they're so low glycemic and they taste amazing. I never used to like ink and berries. Kate, magic went through a phase where um, there was a goji berry drought last year and she could only get ink and berries and so they became like her favorite kind of berry and I was like oh it's disgusting ink and berries taste horrible they're so bitter and sour now I absolutely love them I don't know what's shifted but I just really really am into ink and berries at the moment and yeah they're low glycemic I was reading about them in the superfoods book David Wolf's book they're amazing. They're, they're, they've got more protein in them than goji berries. There's something like 16% protein in canberries. And apparently they help with eyesight as well, which kind of makes sense, right? If you think of like the doctrine of signatures, you know, like how things in nature, foods for humans represent different parts of the body. So um, if you cut into a carrot, it kind of looks like an eyeball. And there's, there's a whole, if you look up the Doctrine of Signatures, if you're not familiar with that, you can see all of that kind of stuff. And these kind of look like deflated eyeballs, right? <laughs> and these are actually, um, I forget how to say the name of them. Um, it's something like Fissilis. And I, I'm not sure if that's a sexually transmitted disease or a food, but... Syphilis. <laughs> Fissilis, I think, is what they're called. Some people call them, like, gooseberries. Um... Like, if you're in the UK, you might just see these fresh. They're the things with the little kind of paper lanterns around the outside of them, and then you open it up and there's like an orange kind of berry-looking thing inside. That's these. That's ink and berries. Um, so when they're plumped up fully, they kind of look like an eyeball. And, yeah, apparently they help with vision. I'm actually in a process of helping my vision to heal naturally at the moment. So maybe that's also why I'm so drawn to ink and berries. I don't know. But I've been soaking them. A lot and then it's nice to drink the soap water and also just to eat them they t they're just so good just as they are you know you don't need to do anything with them do you taste do you like you've been soaking them every day do you like the taste better of them soaked or because that's what you've been doing um I like the taste when they're dried or when they're soaked I just feel like it's kind of a bit kinder to the body to soak them because mm. it's a dried fruit yeah but I like it either way I like them straight from the bag as well Maybe we'll do an episode soon about your new eye vision process, how you're going to get rid of your glasses in a certain amount of time. Yeah, I'm excited. I just today took the first next big step in my eye shifting process. So. Let, let's tell them later, because we're running out of time here. Okay. So we'll, we'll do that on another episode. And we've got... Angela Stokes Monarch. Improving her eye vision, eating ink and berries, probiotics, and... Sprouting seeds. We've got Matt Monarch. And we'll see you tomorrow at the Raw Food World TV Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.